what these people this mob has done is they have harmed india on the international stage what these guys did in ahmedabad was they pulled the country back let's not do this and i would request i would request the government of gujarat to take extremely strict action no saturdays no sundays no holidays working every single day to ensure that india is projected in a right manner and we have those diplomatic strings jain friends i am major goravari and you're watching the janakya dialogues english like this video subscribe to our channel don't forget to press the bell icon friends a sad incident has happened in the gujarat university where four or five muslim students belonging to various countries there, there was a person from from turkmenistan there was somebody from africa and from sri lanka and other countries they were beaten up by a mob of 25 30 people so these young students they were studying in gujarat university and they were in a certain hostel and uh, they were offering namaz because as you know ramzan is we are in the month of ramzan and they were offering namaz in the evening some people from outside came to know and this mob enters the hostel it beats up the student two of whom are hospitalized right now and it vandalizes the rooms the mob uh, breaks or damages their property and uh, they go away and i i would have normally ignored this because you know these things in a, in a and i'm not saying this is normal but all i'm saying is that in a country of 140 crores you know unfortunate though it is some little things will keep on happening here and there and you know then social media amplifies it but first of all let me say that i unequivocally condemn what has happened it is wrong it is criminal it is unethical and above all it is stupid uh i would also like to take this opportunity and explain to people why i am saying it is stupid it is stupid because you know normally as i said i would have said okay this is political news and uh, let me ignore it but then what happened was that uh, i read this news there was a news flash that mea ministry of external affairs had uh, called up the gujarat police and they wanted to know what had happened and they were saying that you know take action immediately and i got think why is the why is the mea interested why is it the mea's business to talk to gujarat police this is a local matter and then suddenly you know there was a trigger and i and i went and found out and i found out that you know these students were from various countries they were, they were not indian students they were foreign students there was an afghan there an, another one from sri lanka some from the african union somebody from tajikistan or turkmenistan actually not tajikistan but turkmenistan and all these and which is why mea got into the act immediately so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to give you certain details of this entire incident and then i will try and analyze it for you so uh they were at the gujarat university block a hostel and students from african countries afghanistan uzbekistan etc and uh, they were offering namaz a mob came it beat them up and also two individuals have been arrested and 25 booked the individuals that are arrested their names are hitesh mewada and bharat patel both residents of ahmedabad and uh, charges against them include multiple sections of the indian penal code such as unlawful assembly rioting voluntarily causing hurt and causing hurt by dangerous weapons or means amongst them as stated by tarun duggal dcp zone 7 so uh, two of them the student from sri lanka and the student from tajikistan they are receiving treatment as the svp i think it stands for sardar vallabhbhai patel hospital i can't be sure but i'm guessing and uh, so this is what it is now uh, this is the news everybody's heard about it now i'm going to uh, sort of analyze this news and tell you why this is such a big problem this is not about people offering namaz and and trying to hurt them or trying to you know vandalize their rooms injure them that is one part it is criminal it is wrong it is extremely upsetting and bad but it is more so because these people this mob is working at cross purposes or has been working at cross purposes you know uh, with what india is doing or what the government of india is trying to achieve now uh, for a very long time if you go in the past and people who follow geopolitics will know that for a very long time india was isolated from muslim countries literally we tried we could not get through because pakistan had a stronghold on the oic but what happened was that over a period of time especially after prime minister modi became the prime minister you know and he took over in in may of 
he made a special outreach to all these Muslim countries, especially Gulf countries, especially the OIC. But today, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that apart from, apart from Pakistan, or maybe one odd country, almost all the Muslim countries in the world uh, think of India as their close friends. Many of them have uh, given Prime Minister Modi the highest civilian award that their country has. This is the kind of respect that India has, that Prime Minister Modi has in Muslim countries. We have developed a very, very strong bond. Now, these countries, from where these people come, most of them may or may not be Muslim countries, but that's not the point. The point is that when we talk about Bharat Vishwaguru, or thinking of India as a Vishwaguru, when we are saying that India will become a fully developed country by 2047, when we are talking about Amrit Kal, you know, I see, I see the NSA, Mr. Ajit Doval, going from one country to the other, one country to the other. I see, I see uh, Dr. Jay Shankar speaking to the media across the world, going and meeting heads of state, prime ministers, presidents, sheikhs, meeting, meeting uh, ambassadors, ministers everywhere. I see Prime Minister Modi every week going out to a foreign country, you know, tying up for India, commerce, trade, investment, you know, diplomacy, everything is happening. When these sort of incidents like what happened in the Gujarat University, when they happen, they pull India back. And it's important that we look at it from this lens also, not just the lens of communal violence. That is one lens. What these people, this mob has done is they have harmed India on the international stage. It becomes very difficult to explain because these young students who were praying, who were offering namaz, were not violating the law. And even if they were violating the law, it's none of anybody's business. It's up to the police to do it. They were not violating the law. They were offering, they were offering namaz because they said that there is no, there is no masjid inside the premises of the university. So we were offering namaz and which is perfectly valid. The Constitution of India gives you the right to pray the way you want to pray. Now, friends, I want to take you back uh, a week back when there was this issue of uh, or this incident of a Delhi police inspector, I think he was, kicking a namazi. A Muslim man was praying and he was kicked and another one was slapped. So social media was divided and uh, some people said, why should Muslims pray on the road? What the policeman did was absolutely correct. The second, the second uh, uh, thought process was that, hey, listen, yeah. Whatever they are doing, right or wrong, they are allowed to pray on the road. They can pray wherever they feel like. So my view was a little different. And my view was that the Muslim men, you know, they were praying on the road. Absolutely wrong. You can't block the road. And no Muslim country allows it. Saudi does not allow. UAE does not allow. Nobody allows this. You will not find this in any other Muslim country. But here's the thing. What the policeman did was also wrong. Had I been in the policeman's place, I would have waited. I would have waited, I would have taken photographs, I would have collected evidence and I would have filed cases against those people who were blocking the road praying. I am against farmers protesting and uh, you know blocking roads by protesting. They are welcome to protest. It is their constitutional right to protest. I am against Shaheen Bagh, not for any other reason but the fact that they have blocked the road. Don't block the road, this is basic civic sense. I am I'm against any festival of any religion which blocks the road. Yeah. You can take out a procession, sure, once in a year or twice in a year, you'll have processions which you can take out. Good. I support all of that. It's a minor inconvenience, but if people want to take out a procession, they must be allowed. But blocking the road for any period of time, that's not okay. And this is what I'm against. Coming back to this Gujarat University thing now, you see, what is our job as Indians? Let's, let's forget about this whole thing. Yeah. That somebody assaulted somebody, police is sorting it out. It will go to the court and people will be punished, I'm very sure. I just want to know, what is our role as Indians? Is our role to support our government, especially uh, in its outreach towards other countries? Mr. Ajit Doval, every single day, working to safeguard India, working to ensure that India's relationship, especially with regard to security, is absolutely top-notch with all the countries in the world. Dr. S. Jai Shankar, India's foreign minister, working every single day, no Saturdays, no Sundays, no holidays, working every single day to ensure that India is projected in a right manner and we have those diplomatic strings and we are connected to the world and, in, you know, in India, India is there everywhere and India's voice is heard. And above all, on top of both of them, Mr. Doval and Dr. Jay Shankar, there is Prime Minister Modi running around here and there, meeting that head of state, signing deal with that head of state, 
get uh, you know investment into india let's talk about commerce let's talk about you know so many other things where does all this come from all this comes from leadership and these 30 people or 25 people who actually barged in and beat up those uh, students who were offering namaz they committed the crime of pulling india back which is why the ministry of external affairs got involved otherwise mea had no role to play in this mea got involved because you know these things have a habit of blowing up out and going out of control these things have a habit of uh, you know getting out of control very easily there is social media there is mainstream media people keep on spinning it public opinion blows up in the face and all of a sudden you have a crisis on your hands now this was contained but you can't have this sort of behavior and it does not matter if those were foreigners or indian muslims it you don't hit a man when he is praying it's 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 basic common sense it's basic ethics is basic decency those people from outside they were guests the sri lankan was a guest the turkmenistan person student he was a guest that african he was a guest that sri lankan he was a guest in our country and what have these nut cases done they've gone and beaten up guests well done excellent you know look at the head of state the president of the uae the sheikh the sheikh could have said no he was large hearted he gave land for building a temple in uae he did not have to do that but he wanted to create and he wants to create a uae that is diverse let us salute the vision of the man let us salute his vision you know dubai dubai hardly has any oil today it is one of the financial hubs of the world let us salute the vision of the person who did that look look at look at saudi arabia look at crown prince you know uh, crown prince mohammed bin salman let us salute his vision there are so many people who are working for india all these big names that i have taken they are working with india india is working with them my only appeal to all my fellow citizens is at least you know people who love to do this nonsense don't do this the government is working very very hard yeah i mean the nsa the the foreign minister the prime minister of the country they're working exceptionally hard day in and day out no holidays no saturdays sundays no no diwali holi anything and they just keep on working every single day to make sure that india reaches where it where where, where, where they want it to reach a fully developed country by 2047 what these guys did in ahmedabad was they pulled the country back or they attempted to pull the country back let's not do this this is not something and and i would request i would request the government of gujarat to take extremely strict action these people need to be in jail so ladies and gentlemen i would also like to uh, you know tell the police of gujarat that you know when you file cases also ensure that when you go to the court you tell them that you know these people have been working these these guys they are anti nationals these 25 30 of them they worked against the interests of the country and they must be punished accordingly not just obstructing something or you know uh, you know uh, threatening with a sharp object or i don't know what, a, what what the what the nomenclature is the legal nomenclature is but these people have actually acted against the interests of india and they must be punished accordingly so ladies and gentlemen with that i come to the end of the video now for the question and answers namaste gaurav ji namaste partha ji sanjeev sanyal ji in many talks had said we have key 25 years in which we must do as much as we can to grow and rebuild bharat what could this look like in military in terms of joint exercises equipment and internal external deployment interesting question partha ji my my guess would be that uh, i would personally like to see the indian armed forces operating more outside of india than inside india we're talking about foreign bases here we are talking about at least 3 to 4 aircraft carriers big ones not 40,000 45,000 i'm talking about 100,000 ton displacement nuclear aircraft carriers we can certainly afford uh a full complement of uh, fighter jets in the next 25 years i'm also thinking about uh, sixth generation fighter jets strategic bombers 
because our, our aims would have increased by that point in time. And India taking pole position in the world and India actually, you know, actually playing the role of a military leader in this world, a peacekeeper of the world. This is what I think we should be doing. Sridhar Gurapu. Hi, Major. Hello, Sridhar Ji. Please tell us your thoughts. Why is there a war between Ukraine and Russia? Why NATO countries are supporting Ukraine to fight Russia? Why Ukraine and NATO is not negotiating with Russia? We people don't know the reason for war in detail. Kind regards, Sridhar. Hello, Sridhar Gurupu Ji. Thank you for your question. It's very simple. Ukraine wanted to join NATO. For reasons best known to Ukraine, they wanted to join NATO. And the NATO countries egged on Ukraine that, come on, you must join NATO, you must join NATO. The idea was to expand their sphere of influence. Russia did not like it. Russia told Ukraine very specifically that, hey, listen, yeah, don't do this. I mean, you are an independent country. We respect your independence. But if you join NATO, it is a direct threat to Russia. You see, if Ukraine, and Ukraine is the western part of Russia's border, it's there. So it is Eastern Europe, right? Eastern Europe, Western Russia, it's here. So the thing is that, if in Ukraine area, if you have NATO forces, you have NATO long-range rockets, you have NATO nuclear weaponry, you have tanks, you have artillery, everything, then you're pointing a knife at the throat of Russia. Russia tried to defuse the situation. Ukraine did not listen. I'm still saying that it was wrong for Russia to invade Ukraine. I'm saying it was wrong. But the fact of the matter is that Russia had no choice. Ukraine and America... I'm not talking about the rest of the NATO here. I'm talking specifically about the United States of America. The US and Ukraine together gave Russia no choice. Absolutely no choice. They forced Russia into a corner and Russia had to respond. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, we come to the end of the video today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Mataram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.